And this afternoon, NIU officials announced when classes will resume. And just to recap for you again, seven students are dead, including the gunman from yesterday's shooting less than 24 hours ago here at Northern Illinois University. Classes are canceled today and indefinitely. Mike, we have a growing list of school closings right now. In fact, uh -huh. we have six on the list. So if folks want to check out the bottom of their screens, you can see those. Tornado touchdown this afternoon near Boone School and Beaverton Roads, hitting several homes, completely tearing down at least one. Nicole, take a look at this. You can see just how bad this fire was. The heat literally melting the plastic off this door. The same door Mrs. Walker and her six children used to escape early this morning. And listen to this. Each day, American businesses generate enough paper to circle the globe at least 40 times. Ariel? Steve Nicole, things can change very quickly, and that's true in the race for Boone County State's Attorney. Just about an hour ago, we reported that Michelle Courier was in the lead, then Jim Hirsch, the incumbent, took over in the lead. Now, once again, Michelle Courier has the majority of the votes. Now, I'm joined live with Jim Hirsch, and it's been quite a roller coaster ride tonight. What's going through your mind right now? There was a moose on the loose in Salt Lake City, and this guy was a repeat offender. And fans here at Showplay 16 are already inside with their tickets, waiting to get the best seat. Now I'm here with a couple of them now, Andy, Allison, and Eddie, who are all dressed up. Who are you guys dressed up as? I'm dressed up as uh, Harry Potter. I'm Hermione Granger. And I'm Ron Weasley. All right, and you guys don't dress up like this all the time, do you? <laughs> no, 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 just tonight. Okay, so tell me, what is the Harry Potter craze all about? Dana, it's now confirmed that seven people are dead from yesterday's shooting, one of them being the gunman who turned the gun on himself. Four of them are females, two are males. Uh, we have the names of four of the deceased for you now. Daniel Parmenter, 20 years old, from Westchester, Illinois. Catalina Garcia, 20 years old, from Cicero. Ryan Mace, 19 years old, from Carpentersville. And Juliana Gahanti, who is 32 years old, from Meriden. Now, police are not releasing the name of the gunman at the time. This all started around 3 o'clock yesterday at Cole Hall, a lecture hall in the center of campus here at NIU. A geology class was taking place at the time with 162 students inside. Officials say about 15 minutes before dismissal, the gunman who was dressed in all black came out from behind a screen on the stage and opened fire. He then fired multiple rounds, possibly from three different guns, and moments later turned the gun on himself. Now, as far as the gunman, police say he was not enrolled at NIU at the time, but is a former graduate student most recently taking classes at NIU in the spring of 07. He was currently enrolled at another college, however. Now, back in December, a threat was written on a bathroom wall here at NIU, shutting down the campus and finals for a day. Police say that at this time, they do not know if those two incidents are related. At this point, as I told you, we have no motive, and I have no way of knowing what the motive were. And so for me to tell you at this point that there is a connection or is not, uh, would be premature. So at this point, we have no idea. And once we finish the investigation, we'll be able to tell you more. And just to recap for you again, seven students are dead, including the gunman from yesterday's shooting less than 24 hours ago here at Northern Illinois University. Classes are canceled today and indefinitely. Um, there will be a press conference at 9 o'clock this morning, and we should have some more information for you then. Live in DeKalb, Ariel Gurian, WTVO Channel 17 News. Our Channel 17's Ariel Gurian is live at the scene with more. Ariel? Nicole, you can see there isn't much left of the home. Now the day after Christmas will hold sad memories for the family who lived inside and the neighbor who tried to help. Thomas Weigel woke up around 5 o'clock this morning to a loud banging noise. Neighbors come over, knocked on the door and stuff. The house was on fire. Standing in front, the Walker family pleading for help. John Walker, a paraplegic, stuck inside. We all ran, you know, try to help them get out and stuff like that. After hearing the smoke alarm, the six Walker kids and their mother, Melissa, escaped through the front door. Thomas says John was in the bathtub screaming for his life. He never made it out. When we did our primary search, uh, the uh, victim was deceased. Real pretty bad, pretty depressed. You know, it's sad, you know, I wish I could have done something. Flames engulfed the first and second floors when firefighters got there. <laughs> Melissa and one child were sent to the hospital with non-life-threatening burns. They'd gone back in to try and save John. Uh, it took crews about five, an hour to get the, the uh, fire up.
control and then about another hour and a half to completely extinguish the fire. The fire is now over, but for the Walker family, the hardship of losing a father and husband is just beginning. Everybody, you know, did their best, you know, to get them out and stuff like that, but just couldn't do it. Now, the mother and child were taken to St. Anthony Hospital. The cause of this fire is still under investigation. Live in Beloit, Ariel Gurian, WTVO Channel 17 News. I was in my room, like, sleeping, and my sister came and woke me up, and I was, like, shocked. I thought she was kidding. I was really amazed, too. I didn't think that anything like that would happen here. The Winnebago High School girls basketball team practices shooting hoops. Instead of learning, classes were canceled. Meanwhile, outside the gym, police investigate the reason why. Someone smashed and slashed about 15 school buses, then dashed from the scene. We needed to cancel school because more than half of our, our buses would be inoperable, and we didn't know what time we'd be able to get the buses up and running. It happened sometime between 9 Tuesday night and 5.30 Wednesday morning. Nearly 28 tires were sliced, five windshields broken, and several fire extinguishers were sprayed onto seats and steering wheels. The damages could cost around $20,000, and if caught, the vandal or vandals will be facing felony charges. It's a lot of damage for one person to do. You would think they would want to do it in a short amount of time. Still looking to see if uh, if it was one or one or more suspects. The district is working hard to get the buses fixed in time for tomorrow's classes. <laughs> while police continue to dig for the answer to who would have done this. People were saying that it could have been people from other schools doing it, but I have no idea. I could see it being someone from a different school, just because I don't know anyone in Winnebago that would do something like that. Until then, students and parents will be left wondering. In Winnebago, Ariel Gurian, WTVO Channel 17 News. 65 million years ago, dinosaurs roamed the earth. They even lived right here in the United States. Last month, I traveled out to Montana with the Burpee Museum to find out what it takes to uncover their remains. It takes a team driving out to Montana each summer to hunt for dinosaur bones. 45 minutes from Camp Needmore in Ekalaka, Montana, a few bones were discovered last year by the Burpee Museum. They named the specimen Petey. It was at the end of the season last year. Of course, it always is. Now it's time to find the rest. Finding a theropod out here is rare, and it's always really exciting, and especially if you think there's more there. Armed with rock hammers and a group of volunteers, we leave camp and head to the Petey site. Josh, are you square? Yeah, I'm good so far. A short hike up these hills just at the edge of the Montana Badlands, and there he is. But the weather is not on our side. We're trying to beat the rain. Uh, it's been raining on and off all day. These bones have been here for nearly 65 million years and are extremely fragile. More. Limb bones, leg bones, and vertebrae are wrapped up inside this pod. One, two, three. Go, quick, quick, quick. There we go. We have to plaster cap the bones. That way, when the plaster dries, we can safely transport the pod and it has to be done quickly. This very large bone is actually Petey's femur. The uh, round thing on the side here is the ball socket, which would fit into the hip. It will have to be wrapped up for another day. Back at the campsite, the group looks at what we've found so far. That is promising that we're seeing this kind of stuff at the PD site, that we're seeing this assortment from different parts of the body. So we're hopeful. The staff is finishing up their research back in Rockford. That pod full of bones and several others are at the Burpee Museum being cleaned up as we speak for display. So when the, the mount's done, then an exhibit gets put around it. And then we open the doors and let people come in and, and get a first look. So far, 10% of Petey has been recovered. The Burpee Museum is still hoping for more. They'll be heading back to Montana in August, and you're invited. Be sure to watch tomorrow night when I show you how volunteers with little or no background in paleontology can play a big part in finding dinosaurs just like Petey. Then we'll talk more about dinosaurs with Scott Williams of the Burpee Museum.